is a buzz mute. Specifically, it is a Chicago Stinger Generation 2 buzz mute made by Hirschman Mutes. And you can write for this mute if you want to get the sound that you just heard in your piece. What that sound is, is there's a couple of kazoo membranes here. And the air, when it goes through that, causes the kazoo membranes to vibrate, much like, you know, a kazoo would. Pretty cool mute. However, it's really only useful, like, for most trombonists once or twice in their life. And it is like a $100 mute, or $80 or something like that. I kind of forget how much, to be honest. So... If you want to write for buzz mutes, or if you're a trombonist who wants to play with a buzz type of sound, what can you do as a budget option? Fortunately, there's a couple of really cool things that you can do. The first one, and again this does require a mute, but it's a little bit more common, is you take a Harman mute. This is a really fun Trapani 3D printed Harman mute. And you can take that with the stem. <laughs> And from there, you take aluminum foil. You take out some of the aluminum foil. And you use this to cover the stem of the Harman mute. This works best with the freshest type of like aluminum foil and you don't want to crimp it too much. You just want to make sure it's going to stay on more or less. Oh, see, making it stay on is important. The 3D printed ones don't have as much of a ridge on them as traditional Harman mutes are, so you do have to kind of crimp it a little bit more. And the other fun part is when you get like enough, like this little butterfly looking thing that's on there right now, it'll actually start to spin on some of the lower notes. But again, without the ridge on the Harman mute, which traditionally has, there's a little metal rolled over ridge rather than the smooth 3D plastic printed ridge here, it'll stay on a little bit better. But it's kind of neat to see it like slide around and move. It's a nice little visual effect. So, Harman Mute with aluminum foil equals budget buzz mute. Now we can also use aluminum foil not on the Harman Mute to get a really cool buzzing effect as well. I believe I first ran into this with the composer um, Matthew Bertner, who's also a saxophonist, wrote a piece called Ace Air, where you play into a hanging strip of aluminum foil, which also sounds pretty cool. And again, this is another budget option, just taking aluminum foil and having it kind of hang in the sheet where you can use play the bell into it. So again, hanging sheet of aluminum foil works well, and so does just wrapping the aluminum foil over the bell itself. You don't have to go crazy with it or wrap it very tight, but this gives you another pretty cool sound. So that's another great budget option. The only thing you should consider is do you have time to take it on and off with all this extra sound? And is that okay for the piece? If that's okay for the piece, great, have at it. Now, if we want to get even more budget option, you can take a CD. Hey, here's my group Lord Bang's uh, CD of Concerto Grosso's called Plays Well With Others. CD I highly recommend. You could listen to it and stream it wherever you want. But you can take a CD such as Lord Bang's Play Well With Others, and you can put, using the hole right here on your finger, you can just use this kind of as a plunger mute. If you do notice 
so much like a plunger, this one kind of distorts the intonation a lot more. <laughs> very high buzzing ratio to it which is kind of cool and if you're looking for that sound you could use it as a plunger yeah you can have all sorts of fun and play around with it however you like now let's say you need even more of a budget option somehow you don't have aluminum foil somehow you don't have a, you know a CD like Load Banks plays well with others. You have one of my last and favorite budget options. Coffee cup lid. Yeah? Make sure it's clean first or get one that's like, you know, not been used. Yeah. But these little innocuous coffee cup can actually get quite a nice buzz on the instrument. <laughs> anything that has kind of a rigid edge to it or like a rigid membrane to it uh, that has a, just enough flex can make a buzzing sound. I tried it also with kind of a peanut butter top lid. Uh, this one is Smucker's. I don't know if it really makes a difference which one you use. And it still gets a little bit of a result. <laughs> But you have to have kind of a light touch it if you if you if you hold it very gently in. But if you hold it really tightly in. You can actually see it start to vibrate when I loosen up the tension. Because to get the source of vibration on it, it needs to have something to go against. So yeah, those are a lot of good budget options. You have coffee cup lid, yeah, peanut butter lid, aluminum foil, a cool CD from an ensemble I play in, and oh yeah, one more. So if you have any percussionist friends, you could talk to them about using A snare drum. <laughs> Playing into the snare drum activates the the stuff at the bottom. And um, if you leave it loose, if you turn the snare off, it doesn't do much. So snare off versus snare on. And you can actually kind of use that in your piece. Yep. So that's another good option that you can use if you have any percussion friends or percussion supplies at your school. All right, so buzz options, what they are, how they sound, there you go. You can have either the, the mute that you buy like by itself, which costs some money, or you can use your aluminum foil, which costs less money, CDs, which are basically free now, coffee cup lids, which are even more free, peanut butter lids, which, you know, depending if you like that like natural fancy peanut butter will cost you a little bit more, or a snare drum which you can borrow from a friend or a colleague or something else. All right, hope that answers any questions you have about buzz mutes. If you have any others that you like to use or that you've had a fun time where you discovered on your own, like let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to discover more stuff. Thanks. <laughs>